Welcome, welcome to our third week of Share the Joy. Um, this evening's talk uh, will be, um, the presenter will be Halama Farden. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, he will be talking about the joy of leadership. Um, I'm going to let Aliyah, who will lead us in prayer, and then we can um, continue. Just some housekeeping rules. Uh, please uh, mute your audio if you're not uh, speaking, and then later during the Q&A, uh, if you'd like to ask a question or comment, um, go ahead and unmute. Um, uh, it would be nice to see all of everyone's faces. Uh, I'm sure Hailama will appreciate talking to faces and not um, visible, um, visible audio, uh, videos, I should say. Um, Aliyah Mercado is a junior majoring in public health and also minoring in psychology, and she will lead us in our opening prayer. Thank you, Aliyah. Yeah, can you guys all hear me okay? Okay. Yes. Um, let's, um, okay. Let's quiet ourselves and put us in the presence of the Lord. I'm in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Lord, please bless our time together. Let our hearts be open to receive all that you will share here today. Let your wisdom reach into our hearts so that we might walk away with a greater insight and understanding of the things you will reveal through Mr. Farden. Grant that we may lead us as Jesus did. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Hi, um, so I just wanted to say quickly, um, Eddie Adachi connected us to Hailama for this Share the Joy. Um, thank you, Eddie. I know Eddie's working on programs for um, Hawaiian History Month. Um, and so just to cue that in there, please attend Eddie's programs. Um, it's a really good panel and you should support and learn. Um, so. Halama will give his presentation and then it'll give us, and then afterwards we'll have some, um, an opportunity for Q&A, um, and then we'll close with announcements and uh, prayers. Um, again, Halama, welcome, and thank you so much for um, sharing your mana'o with us today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, the floor is yours. Aloha everyone. Aloha nui kakua pauloa. Um, I wanted to ask if either um, Kaipo Eddie or Maimoa, you can just give me a little bit more context of the group to which I'm speaking today. And um, I, I, I am prepared. I did send you my PowerPoint, Maimoa, in case I can't um, share. Maybe you can do that. Um, but if just a little background for me on who, to whom I'm speaking today. So it is a mix of uh, faculty, student, and staff. Um, this talk story session uh, was actually created to kind of um, give us a little glimmer of hope, uh, something to think about other than um, the pandemic and the changes that comes with it and the changes that keep coming with it. Um, and we're hoping um, that this will give our community the opportunity to um, to think about hope um, during a time like this and to take what they learn from the speakers and apply that um, to help them navigate through this um, uncertain time. So you, you're talking to everyone from admin to student to student leaders um, to friends from the community. Okay, nice to nice to see all of you. Those of you whom I can't uh, I see, but uh, and those of you who are joining by voice, um, I hope to hear your voice and questions. Um, thank you, Kaipo uh, Eddie, for bringing us together. His grandmother and great grandmother uh, were members of Haleona Li'i o Hawaii, and I think the context that I was um, to deliver thoughts on the joy of leadership was actually. I was told through the eyes of Aleona Li'i o Hawaii. So I have prepared just a small 
uh, presentation, and I'm calling it, and I've used this idea before in other presentations, I'm calling it Kalavena Ali'i, um, because it's more than just Haleona Ali'i that um, might embrace these ideas. In fact, more than Native Hawaiians would embrace this idea. Um, but Lavena means the way you carry yourself, basically. It's a small way of looking at a large concept. And um, before we begin that, I just wanted to introduce myself to you all. Uh, so my name is Hailama Vance Kiha Pi'ilani Kengichi Farden. And um, I come from Waianae. I like to say I was born and raised in Waianae, but I was born in the hospital like most of us. And um, raised in Waianae by my grandparents, my paternal grandparents. And um, my mother passed away when I was four years old, and my paternal grandparents raised me there. So I, I kind of was raised a little, I think maybe a generation above me or like my father's generation and uh, exposed to a lot of things a little differently. So I got engaged with, I think, civic work at, as early as I could. Uh, so I started teaching Sunday school at 16, going to church on my own, put it that way. And then as soon as I made 18, I, I joined Haleona Li'i o Hawaii as one of my first organizations uh, to which I belong. Um, and I'm also a member, shortly after that I joined the YNI Hawaiian Civic Club. Um, and I eventually now I'm the association president of the Association of Hawaiian Civic Club. So uh, working with either leadership or working with civic engagement has always interested interest me. When I was a child, I remember pretending that I was uh, going to defend um, issues and I was only in, in elementary school. And I guess it's because I grew up in a time where it was a volatile, volatile time for Native Hawaiians with respect to um, many um, being, um, let's say folks being arrested for um, being in an area that had been deemed that they no longer could be in after they spent generations there or kaho'olawe issues. So I, I grew up hearing this, seeing it, my grandparents were not engaged in that kind of civic advocacy or civic identity, but they were involved in the Hawaiian Civic Club movement. Um, they were also involved in the 1978 Constitutional Convention um, as, as not as delegates, but they were participants when I think they broke out into community areas. So the talk on what leadership is to me is just my perspective of my experiences. I'm sure many of you have similar experiences. I'm sure that many communities have uh, maybe even more exciting experiences than I have. But today I understand that I'm here to talk to you about my experiences of leadership through Haleona Li'i o Hawaii. So I need to first begin by telling you who is Haleona Li'i o Hawaii and what is it? And um, to do that, I'm gonna take you through a little timeline of Ali'i. So, Maimo, did you want to share the, the PowerPoint I put up, or do you want me to just share it and navigate through it? Or should I try put it that way? Let me share it so that you can okay. just, you emailed it to me, yeah? Yeah, and um, the only thing is if you share it, then I got to tell you next, next, you know, I can control the next. So. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, yeah. I made you co-host. Oh, you did? Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. um, here let me see if i'm co-host then um you could if you don't have it i, I can try it actually i think uh, i can here let me see that way you can just um focus on the and you can just say let's and i can do that can everyone see that oh okay wait so yes, i i you know i did um think about when i create these powerpoints i think about projecting them on a screen or on a wall and it's larger and I forget that when you share a screen it gets small so we might have to maximize yeah. the view and then just move it around <laughs> so you can see the photos might be um, visible but the wording and maybe the wording is not that important because I can always uh, walk you through that okay so let's try okay here let me see present um. Hold on, give me a sec. This is like one of those times where I wish I was a techie, better techie person. Oh, 
Okay, I see it. Okay, does that look better? Sure, and I would encourage those of you who who can to maybe minimize the um, the speaker view so you could actually look at the screen a little better. So Kalavan Ali'i, the royal customs or behaviors or the mores of our Ali'i. And um, let's see. So I might have to ask you to because I'm pressing the next. next yeah. Not going. yeah. So what I want to take you back into a little history. Let's talk about the king of Kauai, Kaumu Ali'i, Kaumu Ali'i. Basically, the name is important to me, and I'll share with you the umu ali. The umu is an overground oven, as you're familiar with the imu, which is the underground oven. Umu were used for different purposes, one of which was to place the body of the ali after death in the umu, and that steam process would remove the flesh from the bones. The flesh wasn't necessarily discarded, but it was separated from the bones. The bones were prepared, and the bones were usually hidden. Um, that was to prevent folks, other chiefs perhaps, from getting the bones, using the mana, that spiritual power of the bone, and then creating fish hooks, or maybe even insulting the, the ali'i. Um, but Kaumu ali'i was the king of Kauai. The flesh, I sh should say, was also buried and taken care of too. Kaumu ali'i, king of uh, Kauai, um, born, I guess, you know, it says 1778, but I don't necessarily think that that's 100% accurate. Um, but um, let's see. Um, he was born around Holoholoku Heiau um, in Wailua, Kauai. His parents were Kaeokulani, Makahelei, um, five known spouses at that time. It was common. Um, three known um, children, Pua, as I'll call them. George Humehume, who went out, got on a ship and traveled to the East Coast, coming back almost in the service as a missionary. And uh, Keli Ahunui, as well as Kinoiki Kikaulike the first. These names are important. I'll say them. I don't expect you to remember them like this because you're being, a lot of this is being thrown to you. At the same time that Kaumuali'i is reigning, of course, the great King Kamehameha is making his way from Hawaii Island all the way to eventually Kauai. Does not defeat the king of Kauai. Instead, gets into a treaty and siege, Kauai cedes the islands of Kauai and Niihau to Kamehameha. By 1810, the Hawaiian kingdom is formed, it's pa. Okay, so by 1810, we've now brought all, all of the minimum, uh, small kingdoms together and we create the kingdom, a Hawaiian kingdom. Kamehameha is the Mo'i, the ruler, Kamehameha the first, and his many wives and many children of different ranks. Um, then Kamehameha, as you know, passes um, away in 1819. Kamehameha the second becomes king. He passes away in England a few years later. His body is returned to Honolulu in 1825 buried at, on the Ilani Palace grounds, um, kind of where the mound is today. Kamehameha his, the second, his wife. Kamehameha the third comes in, sees the importance of succession of the line, establishes the chief children's school, today known as the Royal School, and he names specific children who are privy to becoming rulers of the kingdom. And he makes them, uh, he says, there to go to school school there, kind of setting up a private school just for the highest ranking ali'i who are able to become mo'i one day. Among them, of course, are Kalakawa and Queen Lili'uokalani, as well as other Kamehameha uh, folks that we would know. Lot Kamehameha the fifth, Kamehameha the fourth, and other ali'i like uh, Princess Victoria Kamamalu, etc. And there are a few others. So we can go to the next slide now. Um, I talk about, yeah, that's good. You can skip to here. This is Kinoiki Kikaulike the second. The first one, I just had dates there for you. Um, her spouse was Piikoi, um, David Kahalepoli Piikoi. So she's, she's quite important. She is the eldest child um, and 
also the granddaughter of King Kaumuali. Her mother was Kekaulike I, daughter of, of Kaumuali. So you can see there's bloodline. Kaumuali himself was tied to the top four bloodlines of Hawaii to include I, Mahi, Palena, um, and I'm not too sure how the Palena fits in, um, and E being the highest ranking, and several other lines and other chiefly lines of the different islands. So in Princess Kikaulike II's blood rule or come the good bloodlines of Hawaii. So she never ruled because Kamehameha dynasty was in power. Um, and yet her brother-in-law becomes king. And her brother-in-law was known as David Kalakaua. So obviously David Kalakaua was married to, to Queen Kapi'olani, who was the sister of High Chiefess Kekaulige. By the way, she was appointed by the king to be a governor uh, also. So I show these two for you, to you folks because they're very important. High ranking, her husband, um, you can see David Kahalepoli Piikoi. Uh, his father was Kuhio the first. His children, their children, David Kavana Nakoa, Edward Kiliahunui, and Jonah Kuhio Kalaniana Ole, Prince Kuhio as you may know him. So there you'll see connections now to folks that we're kind of familiar with. All right, next slide, please. So what I wanted to show you is our beloved queen, Mo'i Vahine Kapiolani. In some folks' perspective, Queen Kapiolani may have been higher, of higher blood than her husband, the king. Uh, king Kalaka was her second husband. Her first husband was Bennett Nama, uh, Namakeha, and um, he died. And she was older than King Kalakaua, but she lived longer than he did. Um, look at how her, I would like you to look at how she holds herself. Because um, today we're talking about Lavena, the way we carry ourselves. So I want to put several pictures of our queen so you could see the way she held herself. The queen spoke English fluently. She spoke Hawaiian fluently, but I'll tell you, even though she spoke English fluently, she chose not to speak English. She chose to speak Hawaiian. Um, that was her comfort language. After all, as she said, I am the queen. And if the folks want to talk to me, they should speak to me in my language. So there's a point of Lavena, um, acknowledging her role. I am the queen. I have the right to say what language you use to speak to me. She sits very proper. She sits well. Look what she wears. In the first picture, she's wearing um, a beautiful gown. If you can notice the feathers, I'm sure you've heard about um, the queen and using feathers. Feathers, symbolic of royalty. So by wearing this, it's not about decoration too. It's claiming the symbols of royalty. Um, so here's a gown she's wearing. She's also wearing an order on, on her breast. There's an order. Um, the queen in the second picture is wearing, um, she's, wear, I mean, she's sitting on the throne and um, behind the throne, you notice is, uh, I believe that's Kivalao's cape. So she's acknowledging the ahu, um, another symbol of royalty and rank that were worn. And just so you know, at the time of Kalakao becoming king, there were only six Feather cloaks left in the Hawaiian collection. Others have been given out to sailing captains or given out to other families. In the Hawaiian kingdom, there were only six. At the time of his predecessor's death, King Lunalilo, there were seven. But his father demanded that when his body was interred in Kalakaua, I mean in uh, Lunalilo's crypt, that that ahu would go with him. So there is one buried with him there. So again, she's sitting there. You can see command. Look at the picture to, I guess, our right. You see her. She has a beautiful, um, I don't know it, what that is <laughs> on her head, if it's a fl giant flower or a, um, oh my goodness, I forgot the, the word. <laughs> fascinator, fascinator, yeah? And then the lower picture, she's wearing her crown, a crown. This is not the official 
crown of the kingdom of Hawaii. Um, hers was beautifully encrusted with beautiful gems, and um, one of which was the kukui. And she wore that with pride. Kukui was symbolic of enlightenment. And there's also another connection that we make that certain ali'i of high rank were able to have light of fires lit in the day for them. And Kalakaua and his sister, definitely, there are chants written for Queen Lili Uokalani that, could, that spoke of her being able to um, have kukui candles burnt for them during the day. What is the big deal about that? Well, you don't burn candles during the day. But then she is of high rank that can. You burn the candle at night, right? So our queen, you know, everything about her lavena is very queenly. Um, and, I, and I can go on with many stories about er, all of the ali'i and how they carried themselves. Um, and then there's a final picture. So Queen Julia Kapi'olani, her name, Napela Kapu Kaka'e, um, is a name not heard much. But it talks about that flesh I talked about after the bones are, are removed, I mean, flesh is removed from the bones. There was a place in Iao Valley called Kaka'e where the flesh was taken uh, way up in the top and placed there. And so she's named after the sacred flesh pieces of Kaka'e, of that place, Kaka'e. And she also carried the name Namaka'eha, Namakeha, which was her married name from her first husband, Bennett Namakeha. Okay, we can continue on. This is her sister, Virginia Kapo'oloku Po'omaikelani. She's Po'omaikelani II. Um, we don't know too much about her, except she also was a governor. Actually, there's a lot to, to find about her, buried in the Hawaiian language newspapers. Uh, some of our elite today carry her same name. Um, born 1839, passed away 1895. Uh, she had a husband, no children. Um, see how she's sitting? Um, there's there's uh, eminence of command, of regal command with her. Um, I understood that she spoke Hawaiian and maybe not so much English. She was a beautiful poet. She wrote many chants. In fact, the three sisters did. And they had an affection, a loving affection for their niece, uh, Princess Kaiulani. And the three of them wrote several chants to honor this young child, their niece. Um, and it really wasn't their niece by blood, but their sister's sister-in-law's child. But in Hawaiian style, that's our niece. Okay, you can go down. You can see the next is an article that I found talking about her funeral. Um, she was a member of St. Andrew's Cathedral and a practicing Christian. Her service was part, partly done in Hawaiian to honor that she spoke Hawaiian. Okay, next one. Here is Queen Kapi'olani with her nephew, Kavana Nakoa. The king and the queen kind of hanai their three nephews. And this really gave them, look at the order that Prince David Kavana Nakoa is wearing. He's standing there in attention next to his aunt. Um, and in, by 1883, King Kalakaua, having seen the death of his brother and his sister, knew it was important to, that he was not going to be like Kamehameha V or Luna Lilo, not to name a successor. So he named a line of succession. And he did that actually prior with, to include his brother. He reinstituted a new one and called his, and called his uh, nephews out. So Lili Uokalani, of course, we know, was his heir apparent. The next was um, um, Kaiulani, and then David Kavananako carried the fourth. And I'm telling you this because you'll see the connection to Haleunali in just a bit. Okay, next one. Here's David Laamea Kahalepoli. I was told recently his name wasn't Kinoiki um, Kavananakoa. Born February 19th, 1868. Ka'ala'a Hawa O'ahu. And he, well, he died on June 2nd, 1908 in San Francisco. Um, there are beautiful accounts of his work. Um, and his interest in politics, spent a lot of time traveling, and um, can go to the next one. Um, his brother, we all know him, I'm sure. Um, Prince, um, sorry, this is another picture of Prince David, but we all know his brother is Prince Kuhio. We're very familiar with Prince Kuhio. 
uh, Prince David is standing, I believe, at the Pensacola home that they had. Um, he was a founder of the Democrat Party, interestingly, because his brother, Prince Kuhio, becomes the lead of the Republican Party. After his death, his wife becomes the head of the National Republican Party of the United States of America. I tell you these things because the Lavena went into their action. These Ali'i, now we're, we're talking the next generation down from Kalakaua. In the, in the United States standard, the, the ruling Ali'i are gone. They, they did away with titles. The American view of no titles comes to play. Hawaiian people did not divorce themselves from calling their Ali'i prince, princess, even the queen. She, the queen, queen Lili Uokalani was queen until her death. The people never called her Mrs. Dominus or Auntie Lili'u or anything that we would might, we think of today. The term Mrs. Dominus, even though she was married to John O'Dominus, Dominus, he died before the, the crown was overthrown. Um, that was used by the overthrowers to insult the queen, to, to, to bring her under her husband's, um, to, to remove her from the throne and bring her under her husband's name. It was actually an insult for her. The queen kept her dignity. Our Ali'i in the next, from the 1900s on said, if I cannot wear my Ali'i cape anymore, what do I do to help perpetuate my responsibility for caring for my Ali'i? I think about St. Damien. He gave up his life to be at Kalau Papa, to love the people. If I had to consider a person to be an Ali'i who may not have been, or he may have been blood Ali'i, I would say St. Damien is a great example. Um, and I, I think about people even that walked in my time that carried themselves with the same Lavena, the Lavena of caring for the people, the Lavena of, of being empathetic, Lavena of empathy and caring and aloha are all important characteristics in leadership. All right, next step. So um, his siblings, as I mentioned here, they're in this picture, are Edward Abnel Kiliahunui. Sadly, he died quite young. Um, his brother, Kuhio, Prince Kuhio, as we know, went on to Congress and 100 years ago established the Hawaiian Homes Act, something very significant for our people and for Kuhio. Prince Kuhio again says, I cannot, he doesn't say this, but his behavior is, Lavena is, if I cannot support you as a king or as a prince that I feel is my responsibility, then I will go and within the system that, has, that we are now um, under, under the control of, I will work within that system to help you, my people. And his behavior is, Lavena showed it. Can you imagine, think about this, 100 years ago, Today, what was going on? Well, 100 years ago today and last year and the year before, there was a horrible pandemic that claimed 50 million, 30 to 50 million lives in the first year alone. Who he owe? What was he doing at that time? Was he hunkering down? And I'm not saying don't hunker down, folks. I'm just saying, did he let the sickness, the pandemic, stop him? No. Who he owe? thought of how can I continue to tell my people. He creates the Hawaiian Civic Club, which today is called the Hawaiian Civic Club of Honolulu in 18, I'm sorry, 1918. He then jumps on ship, gets back as a delegate to Congress. He passes a very instrumental law for Hawaiians called the Native Hawaiian Homes Act. Now, why is it so amazing that he did this? Well, Prince Kuyo had no vote in Congress. We were a territory. He was a delegate. So I would share another characteristic of leadership has to be influence. Now, you can, you can influence in a gentle, soft way, or you can influence in a way that leaves dead bodies. I would dare to say Prince Kuhio did not do so. And how do I know this? Well, when Prince Kuhio died, and, and I could have pulled up some of that testimony. You might look this up. The testimony of of the senators and the representatives in the United States Congress, even from those from the opposite party. Again, he was Republican, so there was the opposite party. At the, I think there were two parties at that time, and the uh, three parties total, I mean, 
the, the beautiful sentiments about the way Kuhio handled himself. Now, I will tell you, there was a nice rough part of Kuhio. Um, Kuhio, Kuhio was traveling on the continent. I think it was in San Francisco visiting, or it was maybe another place. It may not have been San Francisco. Um, I, I think it may have been in New York, actually. And he went to visit, um, um, I guess it was Niagara Falls. And while well, he was staying in this hotel, the owner was so privileged, felt so privileged to have a crown prince there, even though Hawaii had already been overthrown. The, the prince walked out and I guess went for a beverage, coffee or something, and a man addressed him with the N-word. And Kuhio looked at him with, um, I guess, with a question as if, did, I, did you really say what I said? And he had said, he said it again. Kuhio walked up to him and beat him up. <laughs> and I laughed because if the man only knew that Prince Kuhio was the last uh, carrier of, probably his the last known master of Lua. So you have folks that we hear of Charles Ken and others who were master of Lua. It is said when Kuhio died, he died with more ai or more holds in Lua than any other. And so he took a lot with him. So it would have been a horrible mistake to engage Prince Kuhio in a beef. He and then goes to, he goes to Switzerland and another man um, addresses him in the same manner. And Kuhio is just not taking it. He doesn't understand racism. And he saw a lot of it. This, by the way, is right before he comes to the United States because he's, he leaves Hawaii after being placed in jail. And Prince Kuhio is there. He was in jail for treason trying to restore the kingdom in 1895. So he's released. He leaves Hawaii. He says, I'm never going to come back. He joins, um, joins the kingdom of great, the Great Britain Empire Army and fights in a war. And he's traveling in Switzerland, and he comes across a man who dishon dishonors him. Uh, this man, I believe he breaks a limb of this man. Um, but that was also a, a very high-ranking Ali in Switzerland, so he didn't get away too well with that. He ended up having to pay a $500 fine. You imagine this, about, about 1900 <laughs> having to pay a fine. Um, anyway, I, I went off. I, I wanted to talk. My next characteristic I was talking about was, besides compassion and aloha, was the, the characteristic of influence, being able to influence and using using the model of aloha and empathy while you influence, as Kuhio did, as is in testimony. And like I said, the exciting nature of Prince Kuhio being able to influence the United States Congress to establish a law that allows for Native Hawaiians to have um, some type of land. And of course, that's again, the Hawaiian Homes Act. So how can you be a leader and influence without even having a vote? That's magical. Okay, next one. Now, some of this I'm just going to run through. This is Princess Abigail Vahika Hula Kavananakoa. She was, um, she's important. She carried the title princess. She died in 1945. Um, the Ali'i, I say she carried the title princess by, by her people. She wasn't married to Prince David until after the over. Overthrow. So the Westerners never looked at her as princess, but the people respected her. She took care of her people. She, she educated Ali, um, um, Hawaiian people who didn't have a chance to. She got into politics, like I said, became the National Republican National Convention Chair in a time where Hawaii could vote. And as soon as it became a territory, women couldn't vote in again. And even imagine that. In the kingdom, they could vote. Women could vote. And then, boom. We become a territory cannot vote. She fought for women's suffrage. So she was one of Hawaii's heroes in that and always thinking of her people. Um, her children were Kalakawa, Kapiolani, Lili'u, Kalani. And you can see, you can see, and then she adopted her granddaughter, Princess Abigail Kekaulike Kavananako, who is now alive with us in her 90s. She was legally adopted to her grandmother. Okay, so let's carry this down. Um, these were her parents, um, James Campbell and um, Abigail Campbell. Okay, we can come continue on. This, these are beautiful pictures. Look at her lavena, the state in which she stands. She carries herself well. Okay, next one. I'm going to show you some more pictures. Again, look how she carries herself. 
Um, this is the uh, former king of England, the, um, um, the one who gave up the throne for his, um, his wife. Uh, this is when he visited Hawaii. Continue on. Here's the princess. And I thought, let's look at it. Let's look at Tahiti. So we see um, Queen Pomare of Tahiti. And look at how she sits. They all have this dignified manner. You know, they're not blow blowing shaka, although I don't know. They didn't exist at that time. But they're still sitting well. They look like a kupuna that you want to go up and hug, although you probably would be prevented to do so. But again, I show you these pictures to see how do they carry themselves. Next. Here again is the princess. And here's the princess with her granddaughter. Her granddaughter is Princess Kapiolani Marignoli, who is 91 years old now. She's in Italy right now because of the pandemic. She, hasn't, she lives here in Italy. She married um, Marquis in Italy, so she has a title in Italy. Um, but she's 91 now. But this is, this is uh, Princess Papiolani and her grandmother. Next. So here is Haleonali. Now this is in 1920. So let me tell you a little bit about this. In, in 19, and I know my time is winding down. So in 19, uh, let's say the 1800s, um, King David Kalako, while he's still alive, in 1886, creates a group called Hale Nawa. Hale Nawa was a secret society. Some teased them and called them the Society of Ball and Twine. Why? Because Kalako brought the great chanters of Hawaii together to document the histories of our people, document the um, chants, document the hula. And you know this about Kalakaua. This is another important uh, uh, characteristic of Lavena, is knowing your mo'olelo your history, okay, and who you are. So Hale Nawa continues to 1891. And then the last ikuhai, or leader, uh, was Prince David Kavananakua. Um, it closes, and some say goes underground, until the passing of Queen Lili Uokalani in 1917. At that time, they had already spoken to the queen about reopening the Hale Nawa. Well, the queen dies, so they go to Princess Abigail Kavananakoa, the wife, the widow of David Kavananakoa, what some believe to be the next high-ranking ali'i because David Kavananakoa was listed as an heir to the throne. And they asked to open the Hale Nawa. Um, she, she approved. She said, let's do it. Um, they open it. Um, they had some struggle in opening. Uh, so again, with the queen's blessing, they tried to open in 1911. It was hard to get things together. Finally, the, the princess comes together and 1918 gives her approval. But she doesn't, even though she's working in the background, she doesn't sign in to become the official head of Haleonali'i until 1920, when she comes in as regent. Here she is in her initiation um, with her velvet cape at that time. Of course, feather cape's too hard to come across. Um, and her three children, David Kalakawa, Kavananakoa, and then the princess is Kapiolani and Lili Uokalani. Okay, we can speed through the next pictures. I'll just quickly say, here's the princess. Um, again, next one. This is her son, Dave, uh, David Kavananakoa. He was known as Koke Kavananakoa. He was married to Cecilia Lake, who uh, you folks know the Lake family name. Kahawanu Lake's mother was uh, Cecilia Lake. Um, and, and, and he becomes a regent after his mother dies. And then the next one is his next oldest sister, Kapiolani, and she has Edward Kiliahonui, Kavananakoa, Virginia Poomaikilani, and then Napela Kapokakai, Princess Kapiolani Marignoli is her daughter. Next, she becomes a regent until she dies. Her sister, who founded and established the Friends of Iolani Palace, again, Ali'i, mindful of how we protect our legacy. Um, Princess Lili Uoklani is the, the regent. She dies in 69. Then her nephew, son of her sister, next page, is Kaumuali, uh, uh, sorry, Prince Edward. So what I show you here is the way the Hawaiians adopted the ranking of Haleonali. Taking the line of Kapiolani, they looked to her sister, Kekaulike, who is on the left, and her three sons, who are below her, Uhio, Kavananakoa, 
and Kiliaunui Kavananako being the oldest. Palakawa acknowledges them as crown princes. Um, and then David Kavananako's children becoming, well, first of all, his wife establishes or sanctifies, not sanctifies, sanctions the building of Haleonali'i. She becomes first regent. So basically what the people are doing is creating a line of succession or honoring the line of succession that was in the kingdom and acknowledging the Kavananakoa line. And then it goes down. Okay, next. Um, here are the Ali'i again. And the, the last one that you didn't see earlier, the bottom right, is Prince Edward Kiliaunui Kavananakoa. And he was regent from 1969 to 1997. Next. His, uh, this is him actually wearing his second great-grandfather's uh, should be great great grandfathers Ahu and uh, Mahi Ole. This was Kaumuali's re, uh, emblem or uh, regalia. Next. So here's the current leadership in the Haleonali, and these are this, they call them the Supreme uh, um, Council, the Kumu'aha Kalani. So the first is our regent, and he is the son of Prince Edward. Prince Quintin Kuhio Kavananakoa. His older brother, fascinatingly enough, is the second regent, Prince David Kavananakoa. Um, he is in his 70s. Uh, Princess Kapiolani Marignoli is the Ikuni Aupio, or second vice regent. And Princess Abigail Kinoiki Kekaulike Kavananakoa is the third vice regent of Haleonali. Both of the two aunts of our prince are both in their 90s now. When um, they're no longer in that seat, the prince would appoint one of his, whom he determines to be his successors, to be in those seats. Um, it is common that all of the seven chapters of Haleonali are named after Havananakua members, and we use the word halau to institute lodge. Okay, next. Um, this is their hale. So this is where I would normally ask you your interpretation of what is Lavena Ali'i to you. Um, I gave you some points, one, of course, being aloha, being empathy, being the ability to influence with the aloha, knowing your mo'olelo, and then that overall carrying yourself with dignity. Aloha, Martin. And let's see, I think, is that the last one or let's see. Oh, this is the picture of the princess's in initiation. And I think that might be, let's see. Okay, so again, there's a nice olal no eal that I have. There's something that you could always um, remember. A chief is a chief because of the people. And our ali'i knew that very well. So if they didn't carry themselves with the mannerisms, behaviors, culture, and wisdom, they were, they, were, they were sometimes taken care of by their people. There are stories of the Ali'i of the Hawaii Island that were killed by their people because they were mean, they were cruel. So our Ali'i know that their kuleana is to take care of their people. And they also do it in a way that they don't call attention to themselves. So some folks might say, oh, what does Princess Abigail do? She doesn't do anything for us. Actually, she does a lot. She has been known to call mortuaries to say, are there any Hawaiians who haven't been able to pay for their burial and she pays for it quietly and she's done that regularly i mean i've been on calls with her uh, even in, when she was i think 90 years old and she kind of scolded me because i didn't call her immediately when a certain kupuna passed away and she said i want to pay for that funeral and i do not want anybody to know i'm doing it okay that was a hard one you know because i had to talk to the family about it and you know that kind of thing but that's her demeanor that's her love vena She's given money for schooling. She's given money because people are suffering, but she doesn't bring attention to that. Um, and a lot of folks don't know this, which is sad because people will judge her only by what they see in the news. So I think that's my last one. A chief is a chief because of the people. So I always tell our people that, you know, people say we don't call them a, a princess or prince anymore. And I said, who started that? Because our people always did. Our people did. And somebody turned that off a few years ago, and it's probably because of the Western influence that told us not to do so. I believe, I believe that ranks, whether you earn your doctorate, 
whether you are a, a kahu, a priest, whether you are an ali, there's, there's mana to that. And it's not for me to dishonor that mana. And we should honor the mana because it was bestowed on that person. And um, so anyway, I would like to open for questions. I know that I was supposed to be finished um, talking, I think, five minutes ago, but... Um, no worries. <laughs> Um, Kumo Lama, just a quick question. Hi. Would it be safe to say that Lavena and I guess the notion of Aloha Spirit, they kind of dovetail together or would you consider that completely separate? No, because I wouldn't think that Aloha can be separated from any good thing we do. Right. Well, how come all these values we have, Malama and all of this, it's like Aloha. Yeah, I almost, I almost believe that Aloha is the foundation. Mm -hmm. And, and aloha is so important. And I don't always want to translate aloha. I can, but I don't want to because I want to think, well, what you see as aloha must be awesome. What I see as aloha, I think is awesome. And I think we should celebrate aloha because we created aloha. It came from Hawaii. And it's not just the word. But if we yeah. use that, I think Hawaii is the pico of the world. We can influence like Kuhio did and our other ali'i did influence the world and let the world adopt aloha. I have no problem sharing aloha with the others as long as they're using it for the benefit of all. Thank you. Hi, um, I actually was curious about something. Uh -huh. uh, you mentioned the term lua and I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm not very familiar with what that is. Uh, could you please maybe shed some light on what that would be or educate sure, sure. So Lua practitioners were, some, some would just define it as saying a Hawaiian martial art. Um, and some say that Lua's objective was, was bone breaking. And um, to be a true Lua master, you mastered the, the body. You knew the body. You knew the weaknesses, the strengths of the body. You knew, um, and I think, that goes along along with with knowing your role or your lavena and knowing your moolelo that um, you also didn't necessarily uh, you were not aggressive it wasn't something sh it wasn't something that you showed off that you had to show off like the the poor people who got in the mix with kuhio well they didn't know what they were getting to but he was so hurt by that racism that it, that he responded in the way he did giving them an opportunity to correct their behavior they didn't so he responded. So Lua is a martial art, I guess. I could just, I hope I'm not insulting it by saying that. Um, and Charles Ken was probably one of the more famous um, kahuna Lua, or Olohe, as they might say. Um, Prince, Like I said, Prince Kuhio, when he died, it was said he was the last great Lua master. Thank you for clarifying and letting me know about that. I actually had one more question, if that's okay. Sure. Um, sure. So you, you kind of showed some of the pictures of the remaining or last ali'i. Oh, please forgive me if I'm using the wrong words and terminology, but are there any other living ali'i or members of the ali'i? Absolutely. So there's a wonderful book, I think, entitled Kamehameha and His Children or something like that. They actually go up to the 2000s. And they list many of Kamehameha's descendants. So Kamehameha having more than 30 wives, um, you can imagine. Of course, the ones who became the Kamehamehas, like the second and the third, were from the highest ranking um, Queen Keopuolani, who had a specific kapu. And a lot of folks don't know this. Um, I guess Hawaiians were taught to be ashamed of their history. So Kamehameha III had a child with his sister, Nahi and Ena. That child was born and died immediately. Um, but that child would have had the highest ranking blood of all if that child continued to live. Um, and a lot of folks don't even know that Kamehameha III, one of his, I don't know if it was his wife's, but one of his, let's say, Vahine, um, was um, did a family line to Queen Emma, and they were cousins. And that child was born, his name was Albert Kunuyakea, and he died in 1903. So a lot of people don't know that. Into the 1900s, the last grandchild of Kamehameha the Great even was alive. And the story I was told, although I cannot confirm that, 
story was told is that they hid him being potentially the last ranking high level ali'i connected to Kamehameha the Great. He stayed hidden. He did have a wife. I think he had two. They didn't have children, sadly. I know he married one of his wives was a Tahitian princess. But then there was another Mo'olelo that a lot of people don't know, a story, that Kamehameha V actually had what the Westerners call illegitimate child. And that child, see, everybody says Kamehameha V died without, an, without a child. But it is well written and documented, even in our Hawaiian newspapers, that Kamehameha V had a daughter. And that daughter lived into the 1900s. And she actually has children and grandchildren, grandchildren and great-grandchildren that's still alive today. And for example, Ra'iatea Helm, the musician, is one of that line. And then you have another, remember I told you about the children who went to the chief children's school? So then there was um, High Chief Iskekani El Pratt. She died, oh, she was 92 when she died. And I want to say she died before Queen Lili'uokalani, if not right after, right around that time. And she has descendants today alive. And there are others, La'amia, uh, La'amia, Gideon La'amia, excuse me, um, who have keiki, like the Owana, Owana Salazar's family. So do they have Ali'i blood? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and it would be like any other family, royal family throughout the world. Um, are there other Ali'i not connected to Kamehameha or Kalakaua? Lineal? Yes. Lineal, a non-lineal, yes. So there, probably every Hawaiian that is on this call has some line of Ali'i blood, maybe not even connected to Kamehameha, maybe. So there are um, Kiki from Pi'ilani that may not be following the same line as, um, and Pi'ilani being the chief connected to uh, Maui, etc., etc., etc. Kaumuali has many family descendants too that are not necessarily the same line as the Kavana Nakoas. Whew, so how do you reckon, reckon? Well, it's a good thing. Just as Kanaka ourself, you Malama, you're Lavena. You don't know if you're disrespecting the Kupuna or the ancestors um, of, of the other. However, I want to say this with you. It doesn't, meekness is not weakness. So like Kuhio, you don't have to um, be sub subordinate, submissive, uh, or subservient, I think that's the key. You don't have to be subservient to everyone, and especially if they don't disrespect you. Um, sometimes there's a point where you have to stand up for your kupuna, and you have to, you probably have to not do what Kuhio did, but uh, maybe find other leadership in Aloha that you can deal with correcting the wrong. Thank you. That was very interesting to, to learn about, especially as someone who moved here and, and wasn't informed or educated about the history of the lineage of the Ali'i. So thank you for enlightening me. Mahalo. Yeah, I wish some of these great authors of historical movies would write about our, probably if you just wrote about from the time Kameha, uh, Captain Cook landed to Ku, Prince, to Queen Lily Wokalani's death and you made a movie or two on that, um, I would think it would open a lot of of eyes to what what happened here and you know just to think that we were in many ways more advanced than most other countries in the world um, think about the fact that we opened a school in 1831 when there was no there were no schools all the way up to the up to the east coast no schools in the united states up until you got to the east coast then there were schools there there was no Department of Education. Hawaii had a Department of Education before the United States did. We, we, were, we, were, uh, we were creating newspapers. We have a million sheets or leafs of newspaper, Hawaiian newspapers, between 1836, 1831, wait, 36, and 1949, a million sheets of newspaper. And just so much information is still there. Um, quickly, I just want to say there are four Hawaiian Royal Societies. Aleona Ali'i, um, O Hawaii was one I spoke of today. Seven chapters statewide. Um, mo many of the chapters are not meeting now, although I belong to the Honolulu chapter and the Maui chapter. 
and the Honolulu chapter and Maui chapter have been meeting virtually because we're not going to let the um, we're not going to let COVID beat us. Um, I'm the Ikunahalani, which is the um, I'm the past state president, but the Ikunahalani is the um, how do I say this without coming across being Ho'okano, is the highest ranking non kavana nakua in Haleonali. So I'm the advisor to the prince. And he's out of town now, so it's hard for me to connect with him because he's staying hunkered down um, on his boat that he has. Um, but members can join from age 13 to whatever. The oldest member, I think, is joined at 92. Um, you have to be Hawaiian to belong to Haleonali Ovai, although we have honorary memberships. Um, some great folks who've contributed much to Hawaii are honorary members. And then um, there's the Ahahui Kahumanu established in 1903, but it has its origination in um, the kingdom of Hawaii under uh, Princess um, Kamamalu, who was the sister of Kamehameha IV and V. And when she died, they went underground. Royal Order of Kamehameha, the same thing. Um, and they were reestablished in 1903. Of course, they have connection to the kingdom. And then um, there's the Daughters and Sons of Hawaiian Warriors, Mamakakawa. So I do belong, I'm a member of the Royal Order of Kamehameha, as well as the Daughters and Sons of Hawaiian Warriors. And um, it'll be interesting if you have the time, maybe not this year, maybe next year, um, Kaipo, about looking at um, including the heads of these Ahahui, the presidents, I'd say, and just talk to them about what their thoughts are and, you know, maybe a nice thing. I currently sit as the president of the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs, so I look at that as a kuhio legacy. Um, I have been for the last two years. I have two more years that I can, I'm can. i running again and this year. My big job this year is bringing the convention, first ever in 61 years, to, be, to a virtual platform. And it's a challenge because of our voting requirements that some people, only delegates can vote and non-delegates -dele cannot vote. <laughs> so we're building that out right now. You can always forward your questions and I can always answer them. Um, behind after or later another time if you have other questions come to you. Thank you so much, so much for sharing with us. Um, we um, I'm going to open it up to any announcements for the good of the community. Does anyone have any announcements or a plug for anything? I have a plug for Shamanad. For I want to congratulate Shamanad because you know, my working partner is Dr. Helen Turner, and um, she is awesome, awesomer than awesome. It's a person that doesn't understand the word no. A person, I mean, I swear she's Hawaiian. She just, she just is just wonderful. And, you know, um, in my role at Kamehameha Schools, uh, she's been a great thought partner, and I'm so privileged to work, and I'm so proud that Shamanad has, you, you may know this, has extended itself to, to now embrace Hawaiian culture, Hawaiian thinking, Hawaiian lavena. It is embrace, embracing itself as a Hawaiian serving school also. And the fact that it's created, it's done in two, which we call Haukahali, and now reaching out to other higher education institutions to say, if you earned an AA at this college and we have the like degree and bachelor's, we're going to not question the integrity of what you've learned. You come here with your AA and we're going to embrace you and hanai you. So I'm so proud of the work that Shamanad has. I mean, you're, you folks are my heroes. Thank you. Any other plug announcement? Okay. Um, thank you again uh, for sharing your mana'a with us. Um, join us again next week for our next um, Share the Joy. Um, I'm going to ask Pono to pray us out. Um, Pono is the internship um, coordinator at Shamanad, who is also a former student of yours and a Kamehameha alum. Thank you, Pono. Um, so let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord, in the Father, in the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, as we end our time together, we thank you for what has been shared here today. May it motivate us to lead our communities into a more just and peaceful place. Pray that we are mindful of the ways you lead us with love, compassion, and purpose. For this we pray, may the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be glorified in all places through the Immaculate Virgin Mary. Amen. Amen.
Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you for joining us. Have Thank a good you. evening. Thank you. Thank you so much.